Thanks be unto God for this occasion to remotely, from Freeman Heights Baptist Church, the greatest church on this side of heaven, to just be able to introduce the great senior pastor, Brother Larry, who's going to bring us a message. But before doing that, I want to remind you, during this time of absence from us being able to assemble, thanks be unto God that because of technology, we still are able to participate in the ministry of giving, and we encourage you to do so. Although you are isolated and at home from uh, coming to worship, the church is still operating and needs your faithful giving. And you can do that in several ways. You can mail it in to Freeman Heights Baptist Church, P.O. Box 460087, Garland, Texas, 75046. Or you can, if you'd like to, just go right on the internet at Freeman Heights and look at the instructions for donate and text giving. And you can find that number 972 330-2982. We ask that you be very prayerful in your continuing support of our ministries during this critical time. God bless you and keep you is our prayer. Put your seatbelts on and get ready. Brother Larry is going to bless us with a word from on high. Amen. Thank you, Brother Mark. Isn't it wonderful that as we go into the book of 1 Peter that we find out how relevant the Bible is to where we live, where we are. I feel like this message was meant to be preached today, preached this weekend as we deal with a virus that everybody's talking about that kept us away, the life of submission. So we're going to turn to 1 Peter chapter 2, 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 13 through 20. 1 Peter chapter 2. Peter writes, Submit yourselves. For the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether to the king as the one in authority or to governors as sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and the praise of those who do right, for such is the will of God that by doing right you may silence the ignorance of foolish men. Act as free men. Do not use your freedom as a covering for evil, but use it as bond slaves of God. Honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Servants, be submissive to your masters with all respect, not only to those who are good and gentle, but also to those who are unreasonable. For this finds favor, and for the sake of conscience towards God, a person bears up under sorrow when suffering unjustly. What credit is there if when you sin or harshly treat, you endure it with patience? But if you do what is right and suffer for it, you patiently endure it. This finds favor with God. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this word. May we pay attention to this word today. May we listen to your word. May we take it to heart and make it ours. Pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Mark, if you listen to this sermon, I encourage you to do so. He says submission is not a dirty word. And that's, a, that's important to remember because the Christian doesn't get a break. Our whole life is a life of submission. We start out by submitting to Christ as our Savior and Lord. Then we are to submit to one another, and then we submit to governing authorities. I mean, we don't have any place in life where we don't submit. Everything is a life of submission. And, and Peter wrote that at one point that the words of Paul are hard to understand. So we get a little help from Paul today in helping us understand this passage. Because he says in Romans 13, 1 through 2, Every person is in subjection to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God. And those which exist are established by God. Therefore, whoever resists authority has opposed the ordinance of God, and they, who, and they who have opposed will receive condemnation upon themselves. In other words, follow the line of thinking. All authority comes from God. There's no, nothing outside of his authority. No one outside of his authority, no, nothing outside of his authority. And therefore, we are to submit to every human institution. Jesus made this very clear when they came to him and said, Well, hey, you, you teach the truth. You don't lie. Should we give to Caesar uh, the tax that he demands, or should we revolt against him? He said, well, well, show me a coin. So they bring him a coin. He said, who's the description on this? He said, Caesar. He said, then render unto Caesar the things that belong to Caesar, and to God the things that belong to God. So we are to submit to every human institution, and we are to respect and honor earthly authorities. That's important when you hear that, respect and honor earthly authority, that, that these are words that are written by Paul and Peter, while Nero was emperor. Nero was a sorry son of a gun. I mean, he just, he was a sorry emperor. And, and 
know, Elisha Herod the king. These guys are not cream of the crop. And our, our submission to earthly authority has nothing to do with the worth of the authority and everything to do with the command of God. It has nothing to do with whether they're worthy of honor, whether they're worthy of respect, whether they're worthy of, uh, of our obedience. It has everything to do with the command of God. According to Peter, earthly authority has a twofold purpose. One is to punish evildoers. The second is to encourage the doing of right. The two go hand in hand. When you punish evildoers, it encourages the doing of right. When you encourage the doing of right, you punish evildoers. So what is our responsibility and authority? I mean, we, we're not meeting here. We're listening to this on, 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 the, on the internet or however you get, because we've been asked to do something by those in authority. So what do we do? Our responsibility, first of all, is to pray for those in authority. First Timothy 2, 1 through 2 says, First of all, then I urge that in trees and prayers, petitions and thanksgiving be made on behalf of all men, for kings and all who are in authority, so we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. Does that describe your attitude toward those in authority? When you, uh, when President Obama made decisions that you didn't like, did you pray for him or did you talk about it? When, uh, when uh, President Trump lashes out, says some of the ridiculous things that he said, do you pray for him or do you, do you talk about it? How, how does that describe you? So we are to pray for those in authority. And that ought to be our basic philosophy. Then we are to honor the one in authority. It does not matter they are honorable at all. It does not matter. We are to honor the one in authority. In fact, we're given a study in the relationships here. Peter says, honor all people. Honor all people. Uh, that would presuppose all people are honorable. But we know that's not true, right? Not all people are honorable. So we honor all people. We love one another. Part of honoring, we love one another. And that has to do with Christians, with loving one another. We fear God, the only one we are to fear. We honor the king, the one in authority. We respect those in authority, wherever. Here is, is the reality of injustice. Life is not fair. There are those who are unreasonable. And you can either rebel and resist, or you can submit. You get your way, or you're pleasing to God. Too many times we do what any lost person can do. He says here, we read that, I mean, if you, if you suffer and, uh, and you complain, and you, you rebel, he says, what credit is that to you when you sin or harshly treat, you endure with patience? What credit is that to you? So many, too many times we do what a lost person do. We have the Spirit of God with us that enables us to deal with submission, to deal with people in authority. Too many times we get what we want when we need to put ourselves in position to get what God wants. Mm -hmm. Trust him as an act of submission. And then we are to obey the authority. It says, by doing right, you silence the opponents of God. Verse 15. For such is the will of God, that by doing right, you may silence the ignorance of foolish men. Why is that important? Because we want them to hear what God has to say, not what, what we have to say. We want them to hear what God has to say, not argue. So never what you want to do. Freedom often results in slavery. In fact, will always result in slavery. You either be a slave to God or a slave to yourself. So we deal with this. We submit to, to, to those in authority. Is there ever an exception to this? Well, when earthly authority demands total allegiance, then you obey God. That's the only exception. The only exception. The early Christians were persecuted because they would not say, Caesar is Lord. They would not do that. But they were still were to be a submission. Uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Nebuchadnezzar has this image of this great uh, uh, statue that was set up. And he, he built one of it. And he said, when you hear all these instruments play, I want you to bow down and worship this image. Everybody bowed down and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And how did they respond to that? They didn't accuse him of anything. They came to him and he said, all right, if you're ready, when you hear the sound of these trumpets, you bow down and everything will be okay. He said, he said, if you don't go, then no, nobody can spare you from this. They said, well, you decide whether that's true or not. If we, we, whether our God keeps us out of the furnace or not, we're not going to bow down before your image. And so they didn't, and God delivered them. And then Daniel, when Darius was king, he, he, he tricked him to make him a law that nobody would pray to him, but, but to him for so many days. And Daniel went and kept on praying three times a day, just as it was his habit. 
He didn't, he didn't vilify Darius. He didn't talk bad about him. He just kept doing what he wanted to do. And, and he continued to pray three times a day. Peter and John are told after the resurrection of Christ, they're told not to speak anymore in the name of Jesus. What do they say? We must obey God rather than men. Again, they didn't argue, they didn't chastise, they didn't do anything like that. They just said, you decide whether it's right or wrong. We must obey God rather than men. And we have uh, Paul, who stand before the Sadducees and Pharisees, and the high priest, he said, I've always tried to live before God, before man with clean conscience. The high priest said, strike him on the mouth. Strike him on the mouth. God said, God's going to strike you, you whitewashed wall. And, and the guy standing next to him says, how dare you speak to the high priest that way? What does Paul say? I'm sorry, I didn't know that he was a high priest. I would not have spoke that way because the Bible says, the word of God says you're not speak evil of the ruler of the people. So we live in submission even when we don't submit. We honor even when they're not honorable. We do what we're supposed to do. We obey God above all. And life is a life of submission. As, it, as we said, a life of submission, we are the people of God. And that's why we're not meeting today. That's why you're reading this, because they have given an executive order by the governor, by the president, that, that nobody's a meeting group of 10 or, or more. And, and whether we agree with that or not, we honor the authority, we submit, and, and we do what we have to do. And, and, and so that we can be a witness. That's what submission's all about. So we can be a witness, so we can honor our God, honor those who, who need to hear the message of Jesus Christ. I pray that, that you hear these words and as you go through this time that you will commit yourself to a life of submission. Of course, you can't do that until you submit to the one and only one who's really worthy of it at all times, the Lord Jesus Christ. We say a Christian life is a life of total submission. It begins right there with your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you've not submitted to him, if you're not honoring him, then you're not going to be able to submit to anybody else. He calls you to submit to him, to follow him, to let him be your God, him be your Lord. That means you do what he says at all times, at all places, and all things. You live in total submission to him. And that's what the Christian life is all about. It is a life of submission. It carries over even to those who are in authority. It's amazing, isn't it, that when we think that there's no authority except from God, that all the evil empires and things that God allows, and, and we all understand that. We can't explain that. We can't figure that out. We just have to trust. A life of submission is a life of trust. And we trust God that if we do what he says we are to do, that he will honor us, and that we will receive the benefits of that. So we're not afraid. We're not worried. We're going to do what we're supposed to do, and we're going to let God take care of everything else. That's a life of submission. Let's pray. Father, thanks for your word today. Thank you for what you've given us today. Pray that we will submit. And, and for anybody who's listening to the sound of this voice, who has not submitted their life to Jesus as the Lord and Savior, I pray that you will give them the freedom right now to make that decision, to make that choice, to, to submit to Jesus as Savior and Lord. And all that they do and all that they are, we pray in his name. Amen. God bless.